IT professionals are struggling with how to get applications to the cloud. Joining me on the whiteboard to help understand how to get applications to the cloud and why the struggle is there in the first place is Ron Bianchini. He's the CEO and founder of Avere Systems. Ron, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, George. So, uh, talk to me about this. What is, what's the challenge with getting applications to the cloud? It all goes back to a fundamental principle called CAP. Okay. So, if you look at a distributed storage system, there's three attributes that are very important when people rely on distributed storage. So the first is consistency. They want to know that when they write something to that storage server, they always get that value. Okay. Um, the second is availability. Um, availability is hard to implement in wide-scale distributed systems, but what availability says is if any resource in the storage solution is available, you want to return the data that's available at that resource. Okay. So just you want things to be highly available. Okay. The third is partition tolerance. Um, so partition tolerance tells us, <laughs> precision tolerance tells us that if there's an outage, if there's a failure anywhere in the storage solution, you still want that storage server to actually be able to read and write data while there's a partition. Okay. And so the 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 famous the CAP principle, which is now a CAP theorem, tells us if you look at these three attributes, consistency, availability, and the ability to handle partitions, it's actually impossible to deliver all three. So you only have to deliver two. A lot of times you'll hear this um, stated as consistency, availability, partition tolerance, pick two. Right. Yeah, so that's why in storage systems we see a lot of different storage systems that are kind of focused on high capacity and affordability versus high performance, right? Right. Okay. And, and this is a very famous principle. It was proposed by a uh, Berkeley professor in 1999. It was posted, and then it was actually proven by an MIT professor in 2000. And since then, all storage solutions have had to pick. And they, they very clearly tell you, we're a highly consistent, highly partition tolerant solution. And then that's the features you get from that so, storage solution. And then where's the rub with the cloud? Great. So if you look in the data center, if you look at typical storage solutions in the data center like network attached storage or NAS, these are highly consistent. And, but they also tolerate failures in the solution, in the disk drives, in between nodes. Sure. So these are consistent and partition tolerant. Okay. When the cloud providers built out their storage, they wanted them to be available across big geographical distances. So they actually picked availability, not consistency. Gotcha. With a widely distributed system, you're going to have failures. You have to make it partition tolerant, but they decided to make it available. And that's where the term eventually consistent comes from. That that's right. Okay. Right. When you write things to the cloud, it's eventually consistent. It's not exactly consistent. Meaning over time, when you update it, you might get that value. You might get yesterday's value until the data is distributed across all of them. So then for IT professionals, it's important to, for them to look at their applications and see what fits into that cloud model the exactly. best. Exactly. So it, there are very different applications that require consistency versus require availability. So a really good example is banking infrastructure. Banking infrastructure has to be highly consistent. So that would rely on a NAS solution. It would be consistent and partition tolerant. Imagine you load a million dollars into an account and then you have two people trying to remove it at the same time. One should get the million dollars and one should get zero. If you were to try to implement that on a highly available sol solution, if there was a partition at that exact time, both would get that money. So okay. that would clearly fail. So, so that would be a very traditional data center application that required consistency. If you think about what type of application requires availability, think about media distribution. So this would be, I upload a movie or I upload images. You want to know that as long as your users could connect to any node in that distributed storage solution, they will get that media. Now, if you were to upload an update, you know, maybe the minutes after that update, they might get yesterday's image, they might get today's, but media distribution very much can tolerate the, the eventual consistency, they just need availability because of how many users they're trying to reach. Okay, so that makes total sense. So then, is there a way to kind of, if you will, break the rules and get more consistency out of the cloud? Absolutely, and, and this very much aligns with what Avere's architecture is for, help, for us helping our users move into the cloud. Okay. We, we developed an architecture that we call Edge Core. Basically, you have some number of Avere instances 
And they could, these could be hardware nodes or they could be software that runs in the cloud. And these Avere instances talk to your users or your servers. So, so all these things talk into the Avere. Behind this, there's a big storage repository. Okay, we call this architecture Edge Core. The Edge device, the Avere device, is what's keeping the users fed. Okay. So it's re in, in the very first instance of our product, this was purely a caching layer. Right. And the repository is the big bulk data. It's okay. where your data is being stored. So in the cloud model, that would be like S an S3 object That's store. right. That okay. would be like an object store. Okay. And so what we did when we adapted this architecture to the cloud that I don't think a lot of people realize is we can guarantee a highly consistent um, access to data up front because we added a consistency layer in our caching even though the back end is eventual consistency is high availability so not only does our cache keep the data local to keep these guys fed it also keeps track of what version it better get from the back if it tries to read it back so therefore we can guarantee high consistency even though the, the data is stored in a highly available storage server. So essentially, you're managing the back end and, and if you will, buffering that consistency, and then, but they're only you're only presenting the sort of the consistent the data that's high, It's exactly right. We're only presenting the data that's highly consistent, even if this guy falls behind in updating everyone. So th then as an IT professional, that allows me to move my applications to the cloud, even if they require a high level of consistency, because you can front end that. Part. Right. Imagine you have all these apps that are, you're trying to move to the cloud, where typically you would point them at S3 to get that very low, big bulk cost point for storage. But if you put our layer in front, we now can guarantee you can take those apps and move them as is because they're getting the same consistency they would have gotten in the data center, even though the back end is not consistent. And you know, there's an industry standard benchmark called SPECFS, mm -hmm. which is a highly consistent benchmark, and they test consistency. We're the only vendor ever to be able to run a highly consistent spec benchmark in front of an eventual consistency repository. Oh, okay. And so then, I, you know, as you know, of course, most of the cloud uh, providers have multiple tiers of offering, and you know, they usually have a, a, a very cost-effective tier, which we've referenced as S3. Right. So what you're also able to do is eliminate the, uh, the need, or at least reduce the need, to use that higher cost, uh, higher consistent tier as well? Th that's right. So imagine the cloud providers provide a high consistency storage server, but it runs in their compute environment right. at much, much higher prices, 10x or more right. prices than what they would charge for object storage. Okay. And so what we allow our customers to do is run their applications, our caching layer provides the consistency, and then they can store their bulk data in the high availability service. This could be a factor of 10 cheaper solution for our customers. Wow, that's awesome. Well, Ron, thanks very much. Thank you, George. So there you have it. If you're looking to move more traditional applications that require a high level of consistency, a way to get around this uh, cap theorem is to leverage a product like DeVere's.